Stage four, day four, power. Brandon's praying. <laughs> <laughs> praying to survive this. This is gonna be tough, but if we can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Let's do this. Box jumps. Now we've worked with a lot of athletes in the past, a lot of Olympic athletes as well, and there's probably one exercise you'll always see them do, and that is box jumps. A lot of power in the hips, the legs, but also utilizing a lot of upper body too to create a little extra momentum and power so that we can jump and accelerate yourself up to the top position of the box, land, and then of course step back down and do it again. And with something like this, we recommend to start on a shorter box, kind of work into it till of course you get a little bit better at it, more confident, stronger, and that way you can jump on a higher level box. So this one, is definitely athlete approved, but also buff dudes approved. So we have the hang clean, and we've done the high pull, we've done the power clean, and now it's the hang clean. Now the hang clean is very similar to the high pull. You're starting with the barbell in more of the top position rather than starting it from the floor. But instead of just pulling the weight upwards, what you're gonna be doing is pulling it into the clean position and catching it, and then that is the end position. So what you wanna do in this one is grasp the bar. What you're gonna be doing is kind of go doing a Romanian deadlift, bringing the barbell down just about shin area, and then what you're gonna be doing is slowly bring it up, and once the bar reaches about mid-thigh level, you're gonna be explosively extending your hips, your knees, and also your ankles, while shrugging, almost acting like you're jumping upwards. Shrug that weight, let the bar travel upwards, and then catching it into the clean position with the elbows out in front of you and a little bit higher, so that way the bar won't roll off with the vertical torso, and then squatting up to the rest of the top position, and then you're done. Return to the bottom, and then do it again. So that is the hang clean. And it's definitely a lot of lower body, as well as a lot of traps too. So it's pretty full body movement. So we got the banded kettlebell swings. Got the band, got the kettlebell. Pretty easy setup. What we're gonna be doing is taking this band and tying it around the horn of the kettlebell, just like that. And then place it on the ground, like a V shape. I'm gonna be stepping on it, pretty wide stance, so one thing to remember, you want a stance that's probably even a little bit wider than shoulder, so decently wide. And with any kettlebell swing, what you're really trying to focus on is the extension of the hip. Um, you're gonna be bowing forward, keeping your back straight, and be powering um, the movement with your glutes and a little bit of the knee extension too, but it's primarily a posterior chain exercise is really gonna be working the lower back, the glutes, and the hamstrings with a little bit of you know, help with your arms, just stabilizing the weight and of course your abdominals too. So with the band, it's gonna add extra resistance, not only what you have to do to exert more force to accelerate the weight, the band's gonna be wanting to pull that weight downwards too, so you're gonna have to decelerate as well. So we're not only working on acceleration, but deceleration uh, with not only the weight, but the band too. So there's quite a bit of extra going on in this one, but it's pretty much the same movement as a kettlebell swing. You just have to be a little more, more cautious because of course it's gonna wanna rubber back, you know? So you gotta be careful, protect your buff dude's balls. And if you're not a dude, then even your lady bits, so. A mistake commonly made in this exercise is wanting to squat down and then try to swing it up just like so. But it's actually not what we're trying to do. We're really trying to focus on more of just the hip extension and focusing on those glutes. So really try to maintain more of like a Romanian deadlift on the downward position where the knees are slightly bent, um, but not locked out. And you're really focusing on the extension of the hip and then returning it back down to here where you feel a nice stretch in your hamstrings and a little bit in your glutes. So this is definitely a good one. <laughs> That's another one that just feels good. It makes you feel powerful. Something about swinging your balls around just, <laughs> it makes you feel like, yeah, like you're ready to smash something. Maybe when we're ready to um, do a little remodeling around the Buff Dudes gym, we'll just do kettlebell swings, knock down all the sheetrock. Or we'll just use our balls. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Rope pulls, definitely a very back intensive exercise. Of course, the secondary muscle groups are gonna be a little bit in the biceps and the rear delts with the pulling motion. Um, but the point about this exercise is you're really trying to pull it with a lot of speed and you wanna go heavy enough where 
you know, those repetitions are definitely going to count. You're going to try to hit eight on each side there, one, one, two, two, and so forth. So by the eighth repetition on each side, you be pretty worn out. Um, the problem is if you don't really have a large space, you know, like as you can see we have here, we have to kind of go back and forth. So it kind of splits up the exercise a little bit. It doesn't work quite as well if you had a larger space and you could do the full extent of the pull for all the repetitions with a heavy weight. Um, but of course, even if you don't have this setup, you can just do some seated V grip rows to really kind of get that back activation. So, but if you do have a rope, if you have heavy weight, even if you just, you know, buy some rope and, you know, tie it around some tires outside, you know, whatever really works, this is an awesome exercise. <sighs> Caveman coming at you. So we have the push-up clap, so it's onto chest, um, and this is a plyometric exercise because you're creating a lot of force with the chest to accelerate yourself up enough where you can move your hands, clap them together, then spread them apart again to catch yourself and decelerate your body on the way down and use that elastic energy and that momentum to kind of keep that motion up. So this one, it can be pretty difficult if you're not used to this type of movement. So with the plyo push-ups we did earlier on, where you have a little platform, maybe you stack some books and get used to pushing yourself up and catching yourself, well, this is gonna be good because uh, if you practice the plyo push-ups, this is basically the next step up because now you're having to move your hands inward to clap. And you can make it harder too. If claps are so too easy, you can try to do a double clap or a clap in front and behind. Oh, the old Russian twist. We love these, but dang, they're hard, especially if you go pretty heavy in them. I think the one thing to remember in this exercise is make sure you lean far enough back, and even without weight, you'll immediately feel your abs contract, kind of bend your spine a little bit to crunch in your abdominal muscles, and then that's when you take the weight, and then you twist it from back and forth. Make sure you don't just move your arms here, like some people might start noticing they're doing. Really twist the body to one side, pull and twist the other. That we're getting the full activation of all the abdominal muscles. But it's the last exercise. It's a tough one, but definitely a good end to this workout. That wraps it up and I'm ready to take a little rest. <laughs> so rest, recover, you're doing amazing. We're feeling pretty tired, so we're probably thinking you're gonna be feeling the same way. We will see you next time for the final stage which is gonna be the hardest six days that we have ever performed in one of our plans. See you soon and stay buff.